Shalom, brothers and sisters. So let's uh, catch up on some of the latest developments in Israel. Netanyahu says Israel is advancing towards the end of eliminating Hamas terror army. We are advancing towards the end of the phase of eliminating them, but there will be a continuation of striking its remnants. Prime Minister Netanyahu said on Monday, according to Israeli media reports, I returned yesterday from a tour of the Gaza division where I saw very great achievements of the fighting being carried out in Rafah, adding that he also was very impressed by the achievements above ground, underground, and by the fighting spirit of the commanders. They are driving and pushing to wrap up the fighting in Gaza so that they can reposition the majority of their troops to the north in preparation for the war that's coming in that area. Smorich in Sterot, I will not be surprised if Sinwar agrees to a deal in the coming days. Minister of Finance during the visit to Sterot said history will not forgive those who stopped the war at this stage. After we have come all the way here and paid all the heavy prices, fallen soldiers, prices that were paid and are paid by reservists and their families, the damage to the economy, the heroic residents here in Sterot, and in towns near the Gaza border, the residents of the north who were and some of whom are still away from home for months in difficult conditions, after the expensive price we paid at the beginning of this war in the Shimchat Torah massacre, it would simply be absurd if after all this we stop just before the end. If we allow Hamas and Sinwar to survive and put the war efforts and the heavy prices down the drain. I, for one, agree with them. They should wrap up and finish what they started to do. To come this far and be stopped from eliminating the head of the snake and ending this thing once and for all would be ridiculous. And all of that effort and all of those sacrifices would be called into question. I personally think if that had to happen, Netanyahu might as well just quit and become, become a surfer somewhere or do something else with his life because there's no way He'd survive politically in the face of quitting right at the end of this whole, whole process. Blinken says Israel has lost sovereignty in the northern border areas, but both sides apparently don't want a larger war. Currently, there's momentum towards a larger war between Hezbollah and the IDF, Blinken said, while adding that none of the involved actors are interested in escalating the conflict. Now, if they aren't interested, Blinken, why are they constantly firing rockets into Israel all the time, non-stop? Doesn't make sense to me. None of the main actors actually want a war. Israel doesn't want a war, although they may well be prepared to engage in one if necessary. I don't believe Hezbollah wants a war, he said. Maybe it's because his house is nowhere near where all the rockets are landing on a daily basis from Hezbollah that he thinks Hezbollah doesn't want a war. Or maybe this is just how his neighbors act on a daily basis. Who knows? Lebanon certainly doesn't want a war. Yes, I agree on that one. Because it would be the leading victim in such a war. I don't believe Iran wants a war. Again, who? What? Of course they want a war. Because it wants to make sure that Hezbollah is not destroyed. And that it can hold on to Hezbollah as a card if it needs it, if it ever gets into direct conflict with Israel, said Blinken. Iran wants Israel annihilated, wiped off the map, destroyed. So do they want a war? Yes. And they're going to get one. Gog Magog is coming at a very fast speed. Israel must make a fateful decision regarding Hezbollah. While the risk involved is significant, Israel has been given a rare opportunity to fundamentally change the situation in the north. The IDF could take advantage of the current international window of opportunity to destroy Hezbollah's strategic assets. For all the rockets Hezbollah has, its capabilities are limited. Lebanese minister said, his name is Riyad Yazbek, recently said to Arab media, it has the ability to cause casualties and damage on the Israeli side, but it cannot change reality. Israel is a country that receives support from the U.S. It is a powerful country economically, militarily, 
and technologically that can return Lebanon to the Stone Age, which is exactly what Israel threatened to do to Lebanon if they don't stop this and withdraw beyond the Litani River as required. Top Iranian general, remember the one Blinken said doesn't want a war with Israel? The next attack on Israel will lead to complete victory. The head of the IRGC's aerospace forces told visiting families of Hamas terrorists killed in Gaza, we await an opportunity to launch another missile attack on Israel. Iran's next attack, said Haji Zadeh, will lead to a complete victory for the Palestinian people. True Promise is the Islamic Republic's name for its unprecedented April 13 attack on Israel, which comprised more than 300 ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and suicide drones, and showed the whole world just how pathetic such an attack is in the light of God, who doesn't sleep or slumber, watching over Israel. But hey, Iran, if you're watching, I've uh, designed some drones for you. They're very easy to churn out so I can get them to you. And they're going to be just as effective as your last attack on Israel, if not more, because, you know, it's going to drive up litter all over the Israeli areas. So maybe that will cause more pain than what you're currently achieving in the face of God watching over Israel. But hey, that's just me. I'm one of those crazy people that actually read the book and believe everything is inspired by God. Brothers and sisters, keep praying for Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the hearts of stone to be turned to flesh, for scales to drop from the eyes, and for them to realize and see Yeshua in their scriptures and turn to him while there is still time to escape the very imminent final week of Daniel that lies before us. God bless and shalom.